Perhaps more important than anything else right now is the importance of freedom and the freedom to be able to follow our faith because this is what will motivate us. We're called to serve the least among us, and it is our religious freedom that is the bedrock, that is what motivates and inspires and protects us and allows us to do that. I went to Mass every week with my parents, and I remember uh, celebrating a, a huge celebration for my First Communion and uh, putting quarters into a rice bowl at Lent. I also remember um, they taught us to be kind, especially to a guy that lived near our house, and uh, asked for money and they would say that that is Jesus in disguise. Marriage is an integral part of forming a solid family. Sometimes it seems so basic to say, every child has one mother and one father. It's how they were conceived, it's how they were created, every child. There's nothing more natural, there's nothing more uh, foundational we believe fundamentally that each child deserves a mother and a father. And so as an agency, when we look at the mothers and fathers who come to adopt, we're looking for what's going to be the best situation for that child. That a child is being grafted into um, a family with a mother and a father. The reality is, is that children are, are a gift and that they're a gift to the parents. Parents have that duty and obligation to care for them and to provide for them. I always used to think that uh, marriage was just a, a private thing between a husband and a wife, and I, I never thought um, about the impact that it could have uh, on society, a bigger purpose other than just that union. So marriage is much bigger than simply my, my decision, my life, my, my family. It has far-reaching implications that affect culture at large. We've seen a growing trend in, in recent years where adult desires are prioritized over the needs of children. When you focus on the needs of desires, you essentially commodify the child. And this is uh, detrimental not only to the children's well-being, but to the family and to the culture at large. The thread that connects us all as human beings is the fact that everybody comes from a mother and a father. And if you tweak that, you're robbing us of our humanity. Cross-culturally, marriage has been based on three different truths. An anthropological truth that men and women are distinct and complementary, a biological truth that reproduction requires both a man and a woman, and then a social truth that children deserve both a mother and a father. Marriage is being redefined right now, and that is going to usher in a tidal wave of third-party reproduction because when you redefine marriage, you ultimately redefine parenthood. I've been really surprised at just saying that it takes a, a, a man and a woman to create a child, that a child deserves a mom and a dad is viewed by some as hate speech, as if acknowledging where a child comes from is discrimination. If in any way, shape, or form, you disagree with the prevailing narrative about what is appropriate in terms of sexuality, same-sex marriage, even a hint of it, it sort of takes the air out of the room. People begin to think you're closed-minded, you're bigot, and you're hateful. Unfortunately, we're seeing a growing intolerance for people of faith uh, recently where the government is essentially picking and choosing the beliefs it wants to protect. And then if you don't agree with the government on certain viewpoints, whether that be marriage, whether that be human sexuality, somehow you no longer are deserving of uh, protections. And not only is this unconstitutional, uh, it's unnecessary. Just because our faith is personal doesn't mean it's private. And we have a, a right, each person, to live that out to the fullest, not just in the walls of the church, but in daily life. When a Christian or a Catholic organization adoption agency may be forced to shut down, that really hurts the mothers who are looking for choices. Diversity, unfortunately, doesn't include the Christian ethos, and I think that's a shame. And they need to rethink what diversity is in the workplace. For truly to be diverse, it should include all people and all beliefs.
As an attorney, I represent a number of clients who are being punished and coerced by the government to change their views on marriage. We're seeing this happen to florists, to bakers, uh, to photographers. We're seeing this happen to, to judges and to clerks who are authorized to solemnize uh, weddings and have a religious objection to doing so. They are really good people who simply are trying to follow the Lord and follow their conscience about something as basic as marriage. The most important thing now is to protect the freedom to be faithful in the public square. And whether you're running a homeless shelter or a soup kitchen, an adoption agency, a hospice center or a nursing home, a Catholic charity should be free to be Catholic. The government shouldn't be penalizing Catholic institutions because of their faith, because of their beliefs, nor should the government be imposing a monolithic secularism. Everyone should be free to operate their charities in accordance with their religious beliefs. It's not just a church or it's not just an institution, it's each one of us has the freedom of religion and that's the first among all freedoms. It's the role of our government to support that right. All the work that the church does for the poor, both here and around the world, her teaching on marriage, it all comes from the same place. It's like water coming from the same well. God is love and he calls us to love as he loves. And we're always called to uh, speak the truth in charity the implications of the redefinition of marriage uh, for religious freedom are, are vast. I think that the short-term effects that we will see will first come in, in the attempt to silence people of faith or people who hold a conviction that marriage is something sacred, something special. They will be silenced, whether that's by the government or, or simply out of fear. First Amendment talks about protecting the free exercise of religion. It's the freedom to worship and it's also the freedom of expression, the freedom to, to live out in practice, whether at work, whether at school, our, our beliefs, because it's our conscience that, that motivates us, it, our conscience that guides us. And, and this is the bedrock principle. It's, it's the free exercise of religion. It's our freedom to be able to serve others, our freedom to witness to others, our freedom to care for the most needy around us.